and just go, Professor, you forgot again, right? You can you can get upset with me. You could do anything, but just remind me to turn the dang thing on because I really want all of these on YouTube so that you all can have access. It's very important. Okay, here we go. So here's the syllabus. There's the AUW template. Here are the readings. Um, so far, I haven't changed them. They're following along. I hope I don't, but you know, doesn't always work that way. Let's see. All right. Here is the paper rubric for when you have to write a paper. I don't want to talk about it now, but there is a rubric there. And it's at the bottom in the first post. There's a speaking rubric. So four different criteria. Again, I don't want to talk about it now. And it won't be every week. We'll just have certain days when I ask you to formally present. That would be after a paper is due. I would like you to pretend you're at a job and you have to do a presentation. So that's just part of your training for adult life. Um, this assignment was long. So the assignment for today was shorter. Um, it had two articles. So what I wanted you, what I wanted to get at was first of all, you get a visual image of these different goddesses. Then you get Spretnik description of what they were like when they were freely being completely themselves before they got crippled by patriarchy. Um, and you don't have to worry ever about trying to understand every word. It's not a textbook. It's not a, it's not something where you have to analyze every sentence to death. This is not the way I teach things. It's just trying how to use your imagination, how to imagine what it's like to live a life like that. She tells you why it's important to have an active imagination. You have to imagine a better world for women than the one you've grown up with, right? So you have to project something uh, forward so that you can follow your own uh, dream, you know, or imagination. And then, whoops, sorry, wrong one. And then this one is just about how the goddesses got crippled. And I have some poetry um, for each goddess. Again, it's a lot of reading. You don't have to read the whole thing or you don't have to worry about understanding or assimilating. There's not gonna be a test. Um, it just gives you this image of what the mythological goddess is like and then a mythological story about uh, a woman who was an example of that. And then some poems about women, this woman got abused by her husband. Um, this is an image of a functioning egalitarian marriage. So that's that kind of envisioning a world perhaps different than the one you've uh, experienced so far in your life. So it just goes like that. Um, so the main point of that day was the difference between a healthy, um, a healthy woman's life, right? How you can be if you're healthy, you're spontaneous, you're able to become yourself and what happens oftentimes in patriarchy. And so then your task is to figure out, right? How to live the best life you can, um, change, the things that you can change and move on, you know, when you can't. So um, Dolana, yeah, I, 
I told her to post this on the post. So I think I'll, I'll cut it if that's okay. Um, she, she picked three things that, well, she, it's a good example, see? There are three things that stuck out, right? That's the first part of the assignment. Yes, Mahira? Ma'am, uh, there was no space except the comment section to post these three things where well, isn't it right here? It says a new assignment, posted a, a new assignment, Artemis, right? Can you open it? There's an, I mean, all my other students usually do this, right? Here's the post. And then you go to the post, right? This was the preview. Was right there in the post section. I, it, it yeah. was not the post that we did about the goddesses. Well, here, yeah, here's the post on the classes of August 20th and 24th, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did this earlier. No, we submitted right. that. That's right. And then let me see, there's another post for, okay. Then there's the Artemis and, and there's another post here, post number two. And that's for this week. Yeah, that's yes, for the yeah. eco-feminist uh, two Artemis and then the next one we will write our uh, reflection about in post two, right? By September yes. three. So where will we write the three things that stuck in our mind? Okay, that's in your post. So you start out, yeah, just, I don't need to read all those things until after the two classes are over and then I'll start reading them. Okay, Mahira? Does that make sense? So, we will, uh, Ma'am, please, can you explain? Okay, so here's, um, let's see. I, I did explain it in the syllabus. So if you want, you know, to go back, but that's okay. I don't mind explaining it again. I just want you to know that you can find explanations, but um, all right. So there's nine things really for each, um, for each post, right? We have two days of class, okay, before class, or the first day of class, there wasn't any before class reading, but three things, I think I asked you, why did you take the class? Three things based on what you, the homework before the class, three things based on during the class, and then your final reflection on that class, right? What did I take away from that class? So you're synthesizing all the time. You're putting stuff together. Then the second half of the post, you read the assignment, three things you write down before class, then you engage during conversation in class. I mean, just jot down notes, then after class you can write them out better. And then your final reflection on that class, and then the whole thing together is at least 400 words and you post it on where the assignment says to post oh. it. So now only uh, by point three things we don't have to post. After when uh, in the September three, all together we have to post, right? Let's see, you had to post number one was on August 20 and 24, 22nd, 24th, right? Yes, two class we posted uh, Thursday or Friday. Yep, that's right. And every week is approximately the same. Does that make sense? The first assignment that we did, we will do all the assignment like that, right? Yep. Okay, so that uh, we wrote in the comment that is not needed, right? That that's right. Things. Yeah, I don't need that. I'm gonna just you just come prepared, and I'm not gonna start reading them until Thursday or Friday, right? And then I'll just read them, read them so, all. So uh, I think it's our responsibility to 
to collect some information from the reading before the class and we should discuss this uh, some question in the class and uh, uh, after our class we should uh, like uh, we should gather all the information that we collected and uh, we should post finally in the uh, in our assignment right yeah except that you wait to post until you've done both days Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Go out it. Right. And and the main thing is I do want you to learn from each other, right? But you're but you learn what you want to learn, right? So everyone's going to come out with a different point of view, a different. It, it'll be different, but everybody just keeps trying to synthesize everything they're learning so that they have this huge image by the end of the class of women's issues, right? This whole space of culture where women are doing all these interesting things or they're failing, right? But they they have these goddess, you know, they have these kinds of energy and they started different movements. They've started different institutions. They're activists in politics or they're, you know, their home, taking care of kids, whatever. You just get this huge picture of women's activities in the world. And so, so I, you know, try not to make it trivial. Try to keep synthesizing. Um, if you see certain patterns, if you see, um, it seems like we keep bringing up this or that, or sometimes, I don't think it's gonna happen in this class, but in the past, students would just get obsessed about just sexuality and they wouldn't think about things like getting a decent job, right? Or getting an education. It, it just kept resorting back. That was usually when there was a boy in the class or more. <laughs> but anyway, so you wanna just constantly be examining and re-examining what you're learning and try to learn as much as you can. Um, any other questions though? Ma'am, for Artemis and for the next class, uh, for 31, uh, we, we have to write two documents for 200, 200, total 400 not words. Two, not two documents, one document. First half we talk about Artemis, second half we talk about ecofeminists. Yes. Okay. And at least 200 words for each one okay. okay and again i i can spell that out more i think usually i put that right in the assignment but i will i'll spell that out more um right in the assignment this is where this is where i have six different classes right and so i did it for maybe four of my classes and then i forgot to do it for this one but i'll i'll do it um, any other questions? So I'm not counting anything late at the moment, right? I've read everything that's gotten handed in, but um, I'm not gonna count anything late. It's just getting us all on the same page, getting us all started. Um, all right, so let's see. Let's go to, all right, that was the point of that lecture was to compare the pre-patriarchy and the patriarchy. The point of this one is to get us started on the different types. Um, there is one section where I talk about psyche and eros right toward the end of the chapter. And there's a whole chapter in the book about that myth. You do not, I didn't assign it. And you don't have to worry if you don't understand that page. There's about one page, that's it. Um, but if you want to read it, I will attach it to this class, but you do not have to read it. Some, some students read faster than others. You know, you learn as much as you have time to learn. You learn as much as you can learn. You learn what you want to learn. 
I'm just going to give you these opportunities, but there's a, you know, I'll let you know exactly the difference between what's required and what's optional. Um, all right. So why don't we, this, this is the, her, the description of her, her life story. Um, and then I had notes about my life, right? But I don't want to talk about my life. I, I want you to talk about somebody you know who has that kind of life. So why don't we do it this way? Each, each of you will talk about either somebody you know or somebody in your country all together, and then we'll break into breakout rooms and you can talk to each other. Does that seem fair? Just so everybody feels validated and the teacher says, that's great, right? And you know, you're doing it right, right? As long as you come prepared and say something that's reasonable, that's, you know, that works for me. But anyway, uh, also I'm kind of like, I like to find out what you're thinking. So, and also I think for the YouTube channel, it's nice for anyone who missed the class to be able to hear what people say. Um, so, uh, Melanie, I'm, you're up in the upper left-hand corner, but I think I'll, I'll call on you about halfway through, okay? Okay. Um, okay, so Risty, what have you got? Did you think of an example? Uh, no, Professor, I just read that disease. <clears throat> That's okay, right? So this time it's fine, but you know what to do next time, right? Yeah, yeah, Professor. Yeah, and it's, you know, there's just lots of stuff. Yeah, Bristy couldn't figure out if I, she was in or out of the class. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's I can problem. think about it now. Okay, you might want to say something by the time we're done. Okay, just let me know. Okay, okay Mahira, did you think of someone? Yes, I think I thought of someone I know. Well, by reading, I, I got an idea that Artemis was very independent, spirited from childhood, when she had uh, so much um, eagerness to study, and then she was also teaching, and then she took care of her um, uh, children also. So uh, I know someone closely, that is my aunt. Okay. okay she very much educated and she uh, everything she does, she succeeds in it, and she has also an focused and determined decision or goal or way of saying and uh, uh, she raised also her kids in uh, such an independent way and a good way good does she ever get mad very often most often <laughs> okay okay i mean when you read this and you thought about your aunt were you kind of surprised that it followed the pattern so much similarity with her. She she is most often the time angry. And she's also <laughs> she's also a principal of a college. Okay, interesting. I mean, I'm always amazed how people really do find examples that really follow these archetypes. Okay, so let me just explain the difference between an archetype and a personality type. Um. Archetypes just come from very deep within, right? The collective unconscious, and they're all sacred. Like they all are dedicated to something that's really important and it's necessary for developing a good society, okay? They all have a responsibility to pass a better world forward. Whereas personality types, there's no sense of, common good, social, political responsibility or meaning and purpose. Um, that's why I think they're fundamentally different. Um, okay, Habiba, did you think of something? No, Professor, I guess we did. Okay. You, you might think of something before we're done. Just raise your hand if you think of something before we're done. Okay. okay. Taslima. Yes, ma'am. 
I have just read. You just registered? Or you just, you haven't yeah. read it? Okay. Um, uh, do I call you Trin? Trin? Yes, Trin is my name. Uh, you're Trin? right. Okay. Uh, okay, so for me, I think uh, it's hard to find someone, uh, find this model in someone who does around me because, you know, due to our education, social values, and I found we are more dependent and in confident, conf, in, in confident than. But I see this clearly um, in some people when they've been through uh, each dimension of the line and they are towards to the optimist model. I found, can what? you hear me? No, I didn't hear you right when you said that you found some people. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I can see this model clearly uh, in some people when they have been through some dimension in their life. Okay. Yeah. Do you know, do you know some prominent women in sports, for example? Sorry, could you repeat that again? Please? You know some prominent women in sports. They're they tend to be Artemis, right? They're competitive. They're aggressive. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. Um, Sauda. Did she disappear? Sauda, are you there? I guess I lost her. Professor Kelly Gordon. Sure, Pooja. She is disconnected. Okay. Yes, Professor. So when we were dis we are discussing about a woman. So uh, a woman who is very close to my heart is like my gra grandma from my mother's side. She got married around at the age of seven. You can imagine just baby, you know, it was like 70 years ago. And, you know, it, she was such a small lady during that time. Imagine a seven years baby who got married to like, uh, you know, 27 years old of a man. <clears throat> and my grandpa, he died around in age of like, you know, 37 or 38. And my grandma was around 17 at that age. My grandpa used to be an Indian army and he, he gave like four babies. I mean, like at the age of 17 and my grandma, she was, she could, uh, you know, the, we can imagine the mental health condition and even, the, you know, like a young age mom who was just alone since the age of 17 and who, who brilliantly she kept up the four babies and all of them are well educated. One is well educated, including my mom, I would say, for now. And then, you know, like, not, uh, I mean, like being a single child mother and uh, doing all the struggles since uh, a young age, so having an independent woman and. Uh, I believe I can connect it with the chapter that we were assigned to read. Uh, and uh, what I would like to say is like, what I have seen a lot is that when, uh, you know, like a man dies in a fire and single, see, according to the society where I am living in, uh, men get married easily, but like, you know, to women to to be accepted by the society at the time you know she remained unmarried for her whole year and she is 77 at the age and she's still such a strong woman and she never you know like talk about the struggle that she went through during the time so that is how i would like to connect it with the very good Okay, so we can give a shout out. We can clap for people when they come up with a really good example. Okay, you have your little emoji or whatever. <laughs> um, let, yes, very good. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, okay, Sauda. What, do you have something, Sauda? Mm. 
Nope, I guess she's, well, okay. Uh, Fayaza. Yes, Professor. Do you have an example? Uh, yeah, Professor. Uh, here is uh, the, it's, it's near, nearby my home. There is an autism orphanage. So I used to visit there. So there's a teacher. She also blind and she's autism. But, uh, but she was like taking care of the students and teaching to the students. It was so amazing. Like I was so like, and I, I can I was so inspiration on her like she was how she can manage all the management and she knows like when I was going oh you first come and I was like oh teacher how did you found me like uh, how you guess it's me and she was like I know you which you, which is your smell and all she's taking care oh. of uh, I think 25 students are there so uh, she's uh, teaching the dance and arts uh, drama sports, uh, all the things, she's the only one teaching, but I was so like the homes and all the cleaning process, everything so perfect. I, I was so inspiration on her, like really I wanted to share with you guys, like she's really amazing. I was, oh my God, how blessed we are, but they are doing something with this autism and all, that's really blessed, right? Very good, good example. <laughs> Determined woman, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jacinta. Do you have an example? Okay. Dolana? Yes, Professor. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, from uh, from the reading, uh, like uh, the, and this is uh, too similar uh, to one of my teacher, uh, like <clears throat> like uh, she is uh, like um, <clears throat> very independent minded and she is very determined to her uh, like to achieve her goal like. Uh, uh, but uh, in the early, uh, uh, she has uh, she has got married in early, and uh, after her marriage, uh, 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 she had uh, four babies, and uh, <clears throat> she has to uh, like uh, <clears throat> she has to carry on her education and also uh, like. Uh, <clears throat> control her uh, like family and uh, also um, take care of her baby and it's so difficult for her like uh, to take up all the things <clears throat> in that way but he did she didn't give up her mind and uh, after uh, trying a lot and after working hard she got like all the things and uh, <clears throat> she had uh, succeed uh, in her life and uh, I think it's uh, it's too similar to Artemis uh, uh, because I found that Artemis was so independent mind and uh, spirited to her journey and like <clears throat> and working uh, her working ability and achieving goals is uh, uh, so <clears throat> stick minded. So okay. I think. Uh, uh, from the uh, from the childhood to like motherhood, she uh, like uh, trying a lot. So I think uh, it's uh, too similar to one of my uh, teachers, and uh, she loved me a lot. <laughs> and uh, one one thing is uh, similar that uh, she got angry very fastly. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Like, uh, <laughs> okay. So she was high spirited, uh, right? Okay. Yes. She was so challenging, and any kind of things uh, she uh, can accept. Okay, so I think good. it's. Uh... It sounds good. Okay, we can do a shout out for Dolana. She found a good one. Um, okay, Amina, do you have an example? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. 
and uh, I have routed all the uh, reading. Uh, so in that time, uh, actually, I forgot most of them, but it's okay if I repeat it, it will be okay. Then uh, an example is that one of my, my friend, my uh, school friend, and she got married, and now she have a baby, and and she she uh, she asks for permission uh, to complete her graduation, and her husband and also her husband families uh, allow her to complete her graduation, and then she had a baby. And right now she is in Malaysia, so no one is there to take care of her baby. Even though she didn't give up and she continued and she also take care of her baby and also uh, she is uh, completing her graduation. Uh, so in the, in the reading, I, I got that uh, Artemis uh, got the opportunity to complete the graduation and also that, that kind of story. So, I think that uh, that story and ultimate story is connected. So I just said, okay, thank you. Okay. Right. That's the idea of focused consciousness, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Focused. Yeah. Okay. And that's during COVID, you know, on the one hand, you have a whole lot of chance to focus, but there is this other just problem when you can't move around enough, right? When your body isn't moving, there's this sort of fog. So you have to sort of figure out how to keep focus during COVID. It's a different sort of task. Um, okay, so Fatima, do you have an example? Yes, Professor, I didn't finish the reading. Um, as far as I, I read, I, I can, I realize uh, in one of uh, a woman's life, the written that uh, a woman who is now working uh, for, uh, for ladies uh, who are not, uh, who are at home and uh, not uh, studying, she just uh, want to motivate them uh, from, from her, um, from her childhood, uh, which is like her husband doesn't allow uh, to go outside. Uh, although she is uh, trying to do uh, to do this work, uh, uh, finally she uh, divorced him because he is not allowing her. But she is um, she is very happy with working a uh, uh, female. Yeah, I just realized something like this, I'm not sure. Good, and so she's determined, she's high-spirited, right? Yeah, yes, okay, yes. Like, does she ever get angry? No, 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 no. That's but she, uh, she is angry with her, with her family, but not her. <laughs> okay, so. well, that's justified. Okay, Toma, do you have one? Yes, ma'am. I also found one person uh, who had like this story. Uh, like my sister-in-law, um, her parents, her mother is a tea worker. And uh, you know, it's so difficult for a tea worker to get education of her children. But I saw uh, my sister-in-law, uh, her parents always get her the opportunity to get education or um, get more independence. Um, so she is very good students in her entire life. Also now she is, a, she is working in a great university in Bangladesh. And um, also she, um, after her married, um, she got to uh, see, give birth to two babies one is boy and one is girl so so in her first year graduation um, she got married and um, uh, she now take care her baby and also her family and uh, um, after give birth to two babies she then she uh, got her graduation um, 
but uh, at the same time she also take care her babies uh, uh, and also um, her graduation now she is teaching in a university students also at the same time so he working uh, in a sports um, like she is a good carom player um, and internationally she also did uh, some sports so it's very grateful to see her that uh, she um, create a great examples for a uh, tea, wor uh, tea workers uh, who get the inspiration for us for to which teach us everyone to teach everyone to um, learn uh, many things from her life so I think it's very great example. Good, very good. Thank you. Um, let's see, Melanie, what about you? Um, my example is my sister Val. Um, she, when she graduated high school, she moved away from home and bought a bunch of farmland and had a farm for a while. And then, um, after that, she had a baby. She had a baby at a young age. <clears throat> um, and then she moved back home and she actually bought a school. And so she owned a school for a while and was teaching. And then um, she got bored with that. So she, once she starts a project, she never really finishes it. She just gets bored with it and moves on to the next thing. And so after that, Right now, she owns a, a shirt business, and so she's just always doing something new. Where did she get the money to buy all this stuff? Our mom. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, does she sell the farm and then have money from that and sell the... Yeah, she... Well, when she... She married at a young age, too, so after she graduated high school, she got married, and bought the land with her husband oh okay yeah and then our mom bought her the school <laughs> wow all right interesting uh does she get mad is she high-spirited <coughs> no she's very angry <laughs> oh <laughs> okay okay um let's see who else Hafsa Hello, Professor. How are you? I'm fine. Can you think of an example? Um, I'm sorry, so I just joined. Uh, I haven't done this, so I couldn't join Sally. I just joined. No, I will try later. Like at... Okay. <laughs> Sauda, did you have an example? Anybody else? All right, so let me just um, bring up a couple other points about patterns in this particular um, kind of consciousness. Um, this woman tends, I mean, you must know a lot of women in sports. So while I'm talking about this, I want you to think about some woman from your country that is pretty well known for have, you know, being this kind of person, all right? If you can't think of it from your country, then you can think, uh, you know, from another country. But I, but I do want you to just learn lots of things about the women in your country too. And so you can do research on that, you know, look stuff up, that kind of stuff. Um, so you become familiar with it. But anyway, sports, competition, um, and then do they treat other men like siblings, right? Instead of, they just don't worry about sexual attraction, but they tend to treat men in school like equals, right? Um, the, the other, the downside is they can be emotionally distant. And I talked about my friend who's always angry. Um, but she's independent, she's competitive. Oh, does this kind of person have a sisterhood? So again, lots of times on sports teams, the, if they're Artemis types, they will form a sisterhood. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes women's sports teams fall apart because, uh, because they 
they don't bond well enough. Um, then the other, the other issue was this analytic kind of consciousness, always analyzing things. So you can think about your own education at high school and college. Are you constantly being asked to analyze stuff? And it doesn't have any, you know, you don't, it, it's not a character building <laughs> uh, ev class, right? It's just you're, you're getting better at Apollonian powers, at reasoning, at math, at science, at uh, maybe public speaking, creating arguments, just all this sort of left-brained, rational kind of stuff. And I talked about my teachers that um, were just hyper-analytic and um, it didn't mean anything. It was just like using your brain as a, a weapon, right, to get to win contests, to win arguments. Um, let's see. Um, all right, and so, well, the other thing I do want to point out is that um, if you ever feel like you're becoming an angry person because you get frustrated, because there's so many obstacles and it's difficult, that's okay. Like you're in good company. Um, I certainly got that way. And I, I was amazed because I, I wasn't that way as a kid, but there's a lot of stuff to be angry about. <laughs> so you have to process your anger though, but it's just, first of all, you have to validate, you know, it's all right to be angry. There's a lot to be angry about. And then you have to figure out, yeah, but I don't want to alienate myself from other people and from my friends. So I have to figure out what to do. There was the Olympic ideal of a sound mind in a sound body, but of course it got perverted. Um, let's see. Okay. So then the section on poetry where the second chapter had examples of women scientists, a woman psychologist, uh, women who love nature, poetry, nature poetry. Um, and if we have time, I'll go back and quote from some of those and, and um, you know, tell their stories a little bit about their experience. In graduate school, for example, when they're trying desperately to do this sort of Apollonian kind of analytic thought, but Apollo himself was very emotionally immature. And so a lot of the, those women wrote about how the men they were around were emotionally immature. But for now, I want you to get into groups and see if you can think of some prominent woman in your country in the public eye. It could have been the history of your country. It could be the wife of the president. It could be the wife of the political leader earlier. It could be any number of things. Or just think about a, a sports figure or um, some other thing that's global. Again, we have global communication these days. Um, so are there any questions? If I'm going to put you in just two groups to make sure that everybody, you know, you don't get in a group where nobody has anything to say, because then it just dies. So if your group runs out of stuff to say, then please right away come back to the big group and I'll try to keep you going as, until the other group comes up, but I'll give you, I'll give you 15 minutes. That's quite a long time. And you might run out of things to say. So maybe after 10 minutes, I'll ask, but don't waste time during class, right? Just um, there's, there's lots of things that we can, um, we can cover during the class time. So don't let the time slip by. There you go. Uh.
my computer is not working <laughs> i'm so sorry okay it's not your fault i'm trying but i cannot okay Pooja, you should Can definitely do it from the percent go ahead so should i proceed uh, the discussion that we discussed in the yep. So, professor, we came up with the personalities that are really working on the field of you know, uh, for the well being of the society and as, at the same time, nation too. So, my friends talk about the women entrepreneurs, uh, really like doing a lot. Uh, a lot of uh, good things in their own country and i talk about the cnn hero a social worker woman working in the field to abolish child uh, you know girls trafficking and making girls capable of finding their jobs in their own country uh, my friends from bangladesh they talk about the woman president uh, whom they inspired a lot and uh, who devoted her life to serve the nations Everyone, you know, like we're talking about the personality that inspired them the most. All the women were very strong, capable, and independent, and working for the well-being of the society and the nation, which was a very good discussion, I guess. Good. Okay. What about the other group? Someone want to speak? Uh, we talked about uh, our uh, president and uh, Begum Rokea, who is very determined to ed education and very independent women. From our country, we can think of that from Bangladesh. And uh, one uh, another sports, there's lots of sports women. Not, I could not think of my country, but in India, there are lots of sports women in Olympics. They're bringing medals. So yeah, that's very inspiring. And uh, the passions are very uh, in appreciated. Okay, another thing that Artemis types do is that they also they don't have children themselves, but they are midwives, right? So they they would be motivated to stop trafficking, right? You know, to fight back against that patriarchy, right? Against those SOB guys that traffic. Um, or they would they would also, they're also big defenders of animals. Right. So um, does anybody know uh, a woman who's a big animal rights kind of person? Anyway, that so was Professor about the animal. Yeah. But, uh... Sorry. Go ahead. So uh, you're talking about a woman who is working especially in the field of rights, is it? Yeah. So I, I don't know about, uh, I, sp I mean, the woman uh, from my country, but like, you know, uh, while we were in the AOW and there was our own fellow uh, friend, I mean, you know, my friend, uh, who is actually the president of uh, Animal Welfare Club in the AUW. And, you know, uh, she is the UG3 representative too. And she's really doing very good, you know. She is like coming up with any ideas to like, you know, to, to have like the animal protections. And, you know, like she is working with many NGOs in Chittagong and she's coming up with like, the ideas how to like you know uh do something for the st uh, animals who are like you know uh the storm around here and there and she's just in contact with the veterinary doctors 
and she is you know so such an empathetic and loving person and she is working very nice and being also a club president which is like animal welfare club i think that is one of the initiative that she took in a very nice way and uh, yeah professor that's all about okay so janifa why don't you um stay after class and we can talk about i don't recognize your name so um just stay after class i'm gonna we're gonna keep the class going here um yeah okay so when i was at auw they have club night right up on the top the rooftop and all the clubs get to sort of explain what they do and you can decide what club you want to belong to and i remember the animal welfare club and i also remember there were some sports clubs and the women who were you know at the table they were definitely artemis types they just definitely look like artemis types and they were trying to get you to sign up you know come on do this this is great <laughs> and then actually we were reading artemis and that night or that afternoon on campus at the alley you know what do they call that that i don't know what they call that the causeway or whatever there there was um some of the students were doing a dance from their country and it was this dance where it was very aggressive and you turn around and it was just like an artemis kind of dance because artemis used to um the rituals for artemis were out in the woods next to the temple to apollo her brother but they were out in the woods and they would dance around a statue of artemis until they got so dizzy they fell down right and so this kind of dance was just like that it was so amazing and i asked the students which goddess was that dance and they they couldn't think of it. And I said, Artemis, and they go, oh, of course. So um, once you start putting on the eyeglasses and you start looking at the world this way, you'll start to see these patterns emerging, I think. Um, so it would be also environmental protection. Again, not every, not every uh, environmentalist female would be Artemis. I don't think Greta Thunberg is an Artemis type, or she might be. I mean, she she loves, you know, she's really worried about the environment, but I think she's awful introverted. And so I would I would associate her more with Hestia, but um, there's there are lots of uh, environmentalist women who are very assertive, aggressive, organizing things right and that you'll see more of that as time goes on because the problems are so bad so you're going to have environmentalists human trafficking uh women who who some of the women again not all of them there's different types some of them might be uh, working for uh, any kind of protection for women against any kind of abuse right and they're very assertive and aggressive and they call out men for what they do they're angry right so it could be animals environment women's um, abuses of women trafficking of women uh, sports um, and then you know just some of your teachers are like that um, so that's the kind of thing I want you to think about. Then in the section, well, there's always a dark side. That's another reason I like this better than personality types, because I don't know about you, but my experience with that kind of stuff is everybody is wonderful, right? Everybody's wonderful. I mean, that's not true. <laughs> so with the deities, there's always a dark side, right? and always in their relation to each other they don't respect each other enough like artemis really doesn't like aphrodite and she punishes her right and women can be like that right they can diss other women 
they can, um, yeah, fail to get along. They can be critical. They can be passive aggressive toward other women. And this is a great way to oppress people is to get them to beat up on each other. You know, keep them together and, you know, keep the oppressor, you know, puts women in situations where they um, are, have to compete against each other or they're sort of more, much more likely to be annoying to each other, to sabotage each other, to compete for the male gaze, you know, to harm each other. And then the guys just go up, oh, they're irrational, you know? And so um, Marilyn Fry had, has an essay about anger. And she says, you know, that op oppression works that way is that you put people in situations where anger is justified, but you don't let them be angry, right? If they get angry, oh, women are too emotional. They cannot possibly run anything. Look at how emotional they are. And, you know, whereas if men were treated that way, I mean, they'd just be a lot worse. So Marilyn Fry says, you know, that anger means that you're justified, right? That, that you've been treated unjustly and you deserve better, right? So when women aren't allowed to be angry, they also start to convince themselves that they don't deserve to be angry. Um, and so that, if you wanted to read that essay, it's interesting. Then there were a couple women, and, and this is interesting in the sense that these are women who were maybe seven years younger than me, okay? So they would be 75 at this point. And they were the cutting edge of the feminist movement. And their descriptions of how they got treated, especially in science, physics, one of them got into a PhD in physics and was completely humiliated and abused. Uh, another one got accepted into a program in psychology and she was humiliated. It wasn't just humiliated. She was, she was number one in her class but didn't get um, her own lab. There was some expensive equipment she was supposed to share with a guy. He didn't let her use it. So there are all these ways that women get crippled. Now, the question is, is that going to happen to you? And this is um, one thing that's, that is interesting for you to think about is that um, you have pulled yourself up right? And you're in a school where you can go on to the next step, right? After this, if you get high enough in the elite, you know, if you get among intellectuals, educated people, you might not run into sexism, right? Or not nearly as much. So try to remember, though, that most women don't have the privilege and the opportunities uh, that you have. And also they weren't motivated at that age when they needed to be motivated, right? So you already have friends that got married, had kids, and now they're motivated, right? Or now they wish they had, you know, taken school more seriously. But that shouldn't hold them back for their whole life, right? Um, but anyway, the students at AUW were motivated when they needed to be motivated. They had, they've been given this opportunity. They have natural ability. So you just keep going. And then um, there are too many women in the US who had a lot of advantages they didn't realize. They thought they did it all on their own. And so they're not feminists. And they just think feminists are complainers and that actually the system works fine. And that is not true. Um, for, for most women, it doesn't work fine. And some of the real dividers are class. If you're poorer, you have a way harder time. If race is a terrible divider, um, you're 
um, the climate you grew up in, in the household, if it valued education or not. If you live in a rural area, it's way harder to get um, all sorts of supplementary kind of educational opportunities. So just try to remember, you know, that if you manage to get by without being too badly treated, that you don't leave other women behind, right? You figure out, you know, in your quest to find out what you're really passionate about, um, to, to make sure and lift other women up, you know, who also have that passion. Um, let me just read from a few of the excerpts because they're interesting. And um, here's one from an artist. And I do teach philosophy of art. So, so I, I was teaching it. I've taught it uh, every other year for a number of years. I don't know, almost 20 years. But I've just gotten so disgusted because when you go to a museum, in the US, it always has the same sort of standard historical Western cultural historical art, right? And there's ancient art, Greek art, there's Christian art, and then there's art during the enlightenment. And art during the enlightenment completely trivialized art. Art is supposed to educate your, your psyche right so the stories of artemis those are art the myths are art and they're intended to to uh reform your imagination and your emotions to a really deep level right and really make you um, uh, try to encourage you to want to become a really mature person so art is really serious business in terms of educating your emotions and your imagination so that you remember, remember to see a world where women are able to flourish. You have to imagine it because it's not in front of your eyes. So art is really important, but in the modern Western world, it's not, it's trivialized. Everything is science. Everything is Apollo, the god of reason. And yet Apollo is emotionally immature. But art got trivialized in the West. And it's, it's sexualized. It's gendered. The whole history, um, it's men talking about men to other men. I mean, it's not art. It's propaganda, you know? It's uh, patriarchal propaganda, I think. So I, <laughs> I used to teach, here are the great books. And I, I'm just not going to do it again. I'm so tired of it. Um, because what gets passed down as important is not at all. It just constantly reinforces this um, privileged Western white man point of view. So again, in your generation, you're going to change the arts and um, among other things, right? So this is a woman artist and she says, uh, my artwork has meant establishing my identity and my freedom in the face of pressures of many kinds. The roles of wife and mother and working woman teachers have eaten away my energy and my courage. A big problem is trying to juggle family and career. Um, the art world necessitate necessities of mo modishness, right? Um, and historical determination and style. So you have to do what's popular. You have to do what's cutting edge. And, you and that's all defined by men. Um, the sexism of art history and art criticism has to be analyzed and combated. Every one of these issues distracts and takes time from the real battle. And this is it for all of you, no matter what goddess you have. 
the painful private battle in which each artist works out her, her way to the most honest and authentic statement. It's a, um, uh, let's see, I see a real similarity between that struggle and the way a woman creates herself through trusting her own needs and desires and working to achieve them. Um, the problem of finding my true work within my chosen field, finding the task that only I could do. So, which is the artist's task, but actually every one of us, every human being is an artist because they're creating their own life, right? And so you wanna find out what your true task is, like what's the one thing that you can contribute more than anyone, but, <laughs> You're not going to find that out until, you know, like the story I said, I want philosophy. Then I go to graduate school and I say, this isn't philosophy. This is crap. <laughs> Why am I here? And then I get a different teacher and then he inspires me. And then I go back to school. It's like, ah, this is awful. What's wrong? But you just keep going and going until you really find the thing that only you can do, but you can do it. And it's your contribution. So a lot of you, I mean, you just contribute along the way, but it's just this long, long process. So the idea of spirituality, the human spirit, is that you want to live for the sake of something greater than yourself. You want to leave behind a better world. All of you are really at the cutting edge where you can, I'm sure you're aware that you're cutting out this new culture for women. And it's really important for you to support each other. So I do want to say that these women are American women. And there's been this horrible backlash um, and um, regression ever since 9-11. So before 9-11, um, things were coming together for women more than they have been. And there are, it's, I don't know when the pendulum is going to stop swinging backwards. But even this, the, one of the authors said, now as the strength of the women's movement ebbs, the old horrors are returning. This must not happen. And in the US, they are returning. Uh, my students, are apathetic. Um, Lion students in general just don't care. They don't think it's a problem, um, which is amazing to me. Uh, of course, I didn't think it was a problem when I was in college. And then I hit it, you know, I get it. I ran into it. But now, and then so uh, until about five, seven years ago, the students that I had understood it was a problem, but not very many students took my class. It's just that now, usually I bring it up in my other class and they usually say, yeah, it's a problem. But the last few years they said, well, it's not really a problem. Um, and I understand that climate change is a bigger problem, but uh, women <laughs> need to stand up for themselves too, or they're not gonna be able to do anything for climate change either. But here's one, here's the last quote. I think I just have a couple minutes. It says, the failure of the woman's movement to retain the momentum of the years of highest accomplishment can be attributed to three causes. The failure of women to bond, the failure of women to imagine women as autonomous, and the failure of even achieving um, women to resist sooner or later the protection to be gained by entering the male mainstream, right? The failure of women to find support systems among themselves is certainly close to the heart of the problem. So that's why AUW is really a wonderful place because women's, it's a woman's culture, right? Women run things. 
And one thing I always told my AUW students is support each other. Don't criticize each other. Don't take each other down, right? Just keep supporting each other, no matter what they want to do. And different women do different things. But I do want you to bond. That's so important. And to, you know, to be able to become autonomous or independent. Um, and then um, not to be passive, like once you get the big position to just, you know, uh, give up on your feminism. Oh, I was a feminist, but I kind of grew out of it. No, <laughs> that, that's, uh, you know, that's not the way to go. So um, let's see. I guess that's, I had something else to say, but I, I can't remember. Anyway, so let me just talk a little bit about next time. Um, so for next time, we have the Echo Feminist, right? So um, Tong just gives you a summary. And let me, she talks about um, the difference between feminist, uh, echo feminist thinking and traditional thinking. So this again goes back to Apollonian kinds of reasoning and the kind of education I was getting in college that I, you know, super analytic. So I left that college. I had another professor who was a really wonderful human being and a mentor. And then I went to grad school and then it was that same stuff again, um, the logic of domination. So um, yeah, all right. So I'm then, yeah, yep. Ma'am, from this uh, PDF or attachment, we have to read from page one to eight only? Or No, you read everything in this attachment, right? It's just read that attachment. Um, let's see, did I say one through eight? There's just 11 pages in it. Oh, okay, let me just, I think that's what this one, this has 121 pages. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to read 121 pages, right? You just read page one through eight of this one. Is that make, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, and that's, yes, a good, that's a good question. That's a great question. So introduction, the tragedy in Bangladesh. So that is technically that is page seven, but just read the first eight pages of the essay, right? It's one through eight, this page number, right? Um, so let me see, let me see if the directions were confusing. Read the excerpt on ecofeminism and the introduction, pages one through eight, on an ecofeminist analysis. Bring one example of the kind of ecological destruction that affects women in your country. All right. So there are, you know, ecological problems are bad, but women are affected by them more even than men right? Because they have to go gather water or they have to go gather wood or they have to do the cooking and there. They breathe in um, all sorts of pollution or things like that. I mean, I'm honestly curious for each of you to find something that is an ecological problem that's particularly hard on women in your countries. And again, that's a great thing about AUW. It has students from a lot of countries. Yeah, any other question? Ma'am, can you give a definition of what is ecological problem or ecofeminist? Oh, well, it just means the natural world, right? Climate change is happening, right? So an ecofeminist focuses on how our treatment of the natural world has been motivated by a very male, Western white male way of thinking way of exploiting the natural world. And so the ecofeminists call out 
all of that abuse of reasoning powers and um, the, the ignorance, you know, the way of thinking is not the way the natural world really is. Does that answer your question? Yes, no. Okay, so, so that's any other questions? We will always, we will always go the whole hour and 40 minutes. So <laughs> nobody should think, ah, can we leave after the breakout rooms? No, because Professor Beck will always talk her way all the way to the end. Um, so you may go and I will stay here, but you may go. It's 1040. Anybody has a, oh, whatever time it is with you, <laughs> 940. Um, I will stay in case students have questions, but the end of class, you got to go to your next class. Thank you, Professor. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. So, Janifa, if you don't have a class right now, I should talk to you because I don't think I have you on any list. Thank you, Professor. Have a nice day. Sure, you too. Yes. I heard you said uh, you talk about my email that you have to email of my and you have to Hafsa. Okay, so Hafsa, let's see. Are you on the email list? Uh, I have you on my list, I think. Hafsa Akhtar, is that right? Yes. Uh, 2019. So, uh, I mean, I have you on my Google Classroom, and I think I checked that with my Zoom list. So is that... Yeah. Is that okay? Yes, the one in Google Classroom is the correct one. Yes. You could type what you want Thank to you. say in the chat if, if there's anything more I need to do. Okay, so Janifa. Um, I don't remember yes. you. Yeah, I don't remember you asking to join. Do you have a different name? Do you have a different name on? Um... No, sir. I just joined your class today, and I want to. Um, I have a request to you that can you please add me in your course? Well, I can't because I actually kicked out. I refused about fifteen other students, so it's really not fair, right? Um, Let's see, Hafsa. Let me, um, Hafsa Akhtar, and it's 2019. All right. Okay. Um, so, can you find another class, Janifa? Because it wouldn't be fair for me to do that. But, Professor, I already joined three other classes, but they also have 90 plus students in their course. So they, they say sorry to me that they can't add me in their course. Okay, so are there any other possibilities? What What is it, is it a writing seminar or, oh no, it's the LCSA. So have you tried all the LCSA, all the yeah. other ones? I already finished the LCA language one. I uh, so I need theory and performing arts. So I chose 